In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, as we gather today here at Our Lady of Las Vegas Parish to celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. We come before the Lord to celebrate our faith and to be strengthened here at the table of the Lord. Let us prepare our meeting with Christ today as we humble ourselves before him and as we ask him to grant us pardon, mercy, and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one, does he, no one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, What eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not make a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say, say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no, because anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. The people of Israel, well, they prided themselves on being the chosen race. They thought themselves to be God's exclusive people. They were not wrong entirely. Uh, Through the pages of the Old Testament, we find God establishing his covenant with them over and over again. God promises them that he would be their God and they would be his people. And in being uh, God's people, there were rules to follow. First and foremost, the Ten Commandments. The problem, however, is that the rules, and especially for the Jewish leaders, became so important that they interpreted them very strictly, making them almost burdensome. They were, it was almost that following the rules took precedence over everything, even their faith. So a person could be judged as being good and faithful if he followed every letter of the law, and he could be deemed unfaithful and even blasphemous if the rules were not followed. Now, the commandments and the rules, they're important, but they were not given to be an exclusive measure of salvation or condemnation. God's commandments were given lovingly to us as a way to guide us in life, just like good parents. Good parents, they set rules for their children, not to be mean, but for their children's safety, for their guidance. So God, as our loving Father, well, he does this for us. His commandments are to help us because God knows what is necessary for us to live life fully. And God's commandments guide us to love and respect one another and ourselves. As Jesus says in the gospel today, I have come not to abolish the law and the prophets. So many enemies of Jesus thought he was doing doing that, but he wasn't doing it. He didn't come to abolish them. He said, I came not to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. Jesus knows we need the commandments and the laws, but not to follow them just because we have to or because God will punishment, punish us if we, if we don't follow them. He came to show us God's goodness and wisdom of understanding of why we have the commandments in the first place. If we truly love and serve God, we would be living his commandments without even having to know them, right? If we really love, we would love God with all our heart and soul. We would respect him. We would honor him and keep holy the Lord's day. We loved one another we would be living that too. We wouldn't steal from one another. We wouldn't blaspheme. We wouldn't uh, uh, bear false witness. We would be living those commandments without even having to know them. It would just be natural. They would be written in our hearts. God does not have to punish us. Sin brings about, its, brings about its own consequences because every time we sin, we turn away from God and we make ourselves most important. It's like walking away from a warm fire on a cold night, leaving ourselves out in the cold and darkness alone because we've left the source of what is warm and what is good. The greatest commandment Jesus teaches us is to love God and our neighbor. And he also taught his disciples to love one another as I have loved you. And so in following Jesus' command of love, 
we are imitating him. We're imitating Christ and in line with all the commandments because they are written, not in a book somewhere, but they are written on our hearts. I just want to share a little story about a, a grandmother who was taking her, her granddaughter, a little granddaughter, to Disneyland. They were going for the first time. They were all excited. They were getting out of the airplane to, to fly. And um, the grandmother was all excited because the little girl had gotten the Shakespeare seat. And the grandmother said, or the granddaughter said, what do you mean, the Shakespeare seat? Well, she says, because, dear, you are sitting in seat 2B. So it's the Shakespeare seat. And the little granddaughter said, oh, don't, don't be silly, grandmother. All the seats on the airplane are Shakespeare seats. And the grandmother said, well, how is that? He said, well, it's really easy, Grandma. It's either seat 2B or not 2B. Please join with us now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one Catholic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We are called to follow the law of Christ, especially the most important commandment, to love God and to love one another. Let us show our love for each other as we now bring our prayers for one another before the Lord. That the Church, led by Pope Francis and all the bishops, may always guide us according to the spirits of God's law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who create, enforce, or interpret the law, that through their work they may seek to bring justice for all members of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from isolation and loneliness, especially during these winter months, that they may know the constant presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples may work to nurture their marriage through good times and bad, and sickness and in health, becoming a sign of Christ's selfless love for all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, that we may live the commandments of love and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayer intentions listed in our community book of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in Christ, that the Lord may grant them everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth and Ziggy Vashuta, and all of our personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O merciful God, teach us your law and forgive us when we fail. Hear this in all our prayers that we bring to you today. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, Father, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, and all Gregory, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with and, your spirit. Spirit. and let us offer each other now a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for celebrating this Mass with us as you come to us through our social media and the whichever, however you get to us and are be with, with us. Thank you so much for being with us. We very much appreciate you being here and with us through uh, this media and praying with us today on this sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. I thank all of our ministers, as always, who assist at Mass, to uh, Teresa, who are, is our lector, to Mikhail for uh, manning our cameras, and to Eva and David for lifting us up so much in, in music, making this a wonderful celebration. It's not always that we have people in, in church with us. Usually it's just the, with the five of us, six of us that are here. Uh, but we have guests here today, Ella and, and Zygmunt uh, Vashuta, who are here at Mass today with us. And in fact, this Mass was offered for the, their intention today. So God be with you as, as may he watch over you and, and bless you. And uh, this coming week is Valentine's Day. We're coming on Tuesday, so I wish all of you a very happy Valentine's Day. And so, if anyone is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something special going on in your life, our best wishes to you, as always. And if you are carrying a heavy burden on your soul and your heart, please know that our prayers go with you. And so, as we go forth, let us do so now with God's grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.